So, I want to, uh, first of all, fix the lighting. <laughs> That's a, well, it's a little bit better. Maybe, that was maybe too much. Anyways, this is just a journal. It's March 18th, I believe. And, uh... I had a lot of realizations yesterday, not even a lot. I wouldn't actually, I wouldn't say I had plural new revelations. I had one that pointed me to the many revelations I've had over the last few years. Uh, I realize I'm very hesitant to say things about myself, to observe myself, and to put labels or names to, to aspects of who I am. I think I've been really, really okay and felt safe being pretty vague about who I believe I am. I say safe because it protects me from the judgments of society. And I effectively have protected myself from many, many, many judgments. When you are something that you've seen other people be, and then you've seen their life become worse for it. You tend to avoid openly being those parts of yourself. And um, nobody should be blamed for that. I don't need to blame myself for that or feel guilty. However, when you are able to step clearly into that thing, you are now able to be an ally and a part and a part of supporting those who have been disadvantaged or who have been prejudiced against. Um, or who have been alienated, or have been exiled, or just unincluded. A lot of times I can feel like an imposter or a fraud because I don't exemplify certain things as well as other people exemplify them, but then I realize other people have had a lot of practice because I'm here actually at step one which is putting a name to it, just admitting it's real. And here's what I mean, here are the things. Uh, one, I consider myself a magician, not a like card tricks, sleight of hand magician, but the kind of magician who believes in mind, meaning, and change. You don't have to be a magician to necessarily believe those things, but uh, a magician who participates in uh, ritual, in spell making, and divination that's a little bit like it's a little bit more specific I've been practicing um, the art of tarot reading for two or three years now I've done readings for other people and I've done them well 
and I've helped people make choices in their own lives using its aid and by understanding it. I memorized the cards, their meanings. I, uh, at one point, had the Hebrew language memorized. Uh, I've learned more about astrology and all of those associations that go along with it. I dove really deep into that, and it, in many ways, has been life-changing for me as well, um, it being divination in general. Um, but tarot specifically has helped me expand myself in ways I'm not sure I have or would have on my own. It's, uh, the act of divination is reaching out, reaching out for something that is inside of you, is how I would put it in the way I've experienced it. I think we are big enough, we are godly enough to contain all of our own answers. But you have to reach out for those answers. It just so happens that you become somebody inside of yourself also reaching out. And it just completes a circuit, but in a fractal kind of way. If that makes sense, it's why it works. It's because we are all part of a unity, even while we retain our individual selves, we are connected. Life is, I mean, reality is non-local. Ask any quantum <laughs> physicist whether they agree. They do. Um, so we contain all possibilities because we're connected to all possibilities. And when we reach out, we are expanding the knowledge of our capabilities. Um, and even maybe just remembering something that we already knew but forgot is one way that I would put it. Um, I also have had mystical experiences uh, where I've talked to n like non-physical entities. Um, probably just one, but sometimes it can be hard for me to know whether it's all from the same place. Um, and I, I, I do and don't want to defend this in a way of like, oh, well, it's all in your head. Well, even if it was, that doesn't mean it's not. That doesn't mean that's not what I'm experiencing. And again, if we're connected to everything, like our mind is connected to everything, um, and we kind of perceive our mind to be in our head, I think everything in some way is in your head, and that doesn't make it not legitimate. Anyways, talk to non-physical entities that have also guided me and helped me. I've had better therapy sessions <laughs> in certain conversations than I could ever probably pay for here. Um, I also divine through like meditation um, and have written down really profound things that I should share. But like, you won't share something if you're not even willing to tell people what experience you went through. You know? So that's... It's really important that I'm coming to terms with these kinds of things. Um, what else am I... I am... I consider myself... So I am 
I suppose, non-binary or agender, just meaning that I don't identify with the binary structure of gender. Um, if you have a masculine and, and feminine spectrum, which I mean, I see that that's real. It's real that that we've developed a spectrum, <laughs> but uh, I don't really care to fall on any certain point in that spectrum. From what I understand, that means I'm non-binary or agender. And that's something that I haven't fully expressed just because I haven't been willing to say it out loud or to anybody besides myself, really. Myself and like some very close individuals to me or just like on my private Instagram. You know, a lot of this stuff I only share on my private internet spaces and that's been good because it's been safe. However, that room gets too small eventually. Eventually, you want to be yourself without any limits, without any ceiling. And that's about where I'm at now that I've been in this safe place, exploring. I do truly believe that's what I am. I am polyamorous. Even though I'm in a monogamous relationship, that is possible. Excuse me. Meaning that I, when I love one person, it doesn't mean that I stop loving other people. I have hundreds of crushes. My partner knows this. She knows I'm poly. Um... And that used to be something that caused me a lot of problems in relationships because I'd, I'd get in one and then I would feel wrong that I still was attracted to other people and kind of felt like, one, I should either re repress it or pretend that wasn't happening or if that was happening, then I felt like it was wrong to be in the relationship when really it wasn't wrong is just that I needed to be able to admit that and then um, just adhere to my choice regardless. A, an exclusive relationship doesn't... An exclusive relationship is a decision. It doesn't mean, oh, now you are the only person in the world that I'm attracted to. Um, maybe for some people that's how it works, but for other people um, and I mean, I honestly think most people, uh, you still retain your attractions. It's just that you've made an agreement with another person of what your boundaries are. Um, when it comes to people that are outside of that relationship. And, you know, that's not a big deal. For me to have friends that I'm not, like, in a romantic relationship with, even though I am attracted to them, but I can know what my boundaries are with those people, and I can adhere to those boundaries, right? That's That would be the thinking of, like, a polyamorous person in a monogamous relationship. Um you're in a polyamorous relationship, you'd have, uh, I mean, really just more expansive boundaries outside of it. That's all. I mean, that's like really the difference. It's not that big of a difference. They're not, they're not so fundamentally different. There's just the, the boundary expressions outside of the relationship are different. Anyways, a um, little bit of a tangent, but I, I am, I am poly. I haven't, um, really experienced great 
ex examples of poly relationships in my life, and that's due a lot to how young I am in understanding that, and and just like, kind of like lack of communication, which more came from lack of understanding ourselves in the times that I've tried it. So, um, I'm gonna get to try that again, and that's okay. At least I can acknowledge to myself that, like, just what I am. And that is really freeing. I'm happy in my relationship. And I can say, I'm Paul. So cool. Um, to expand on the non-binary stuff a little bit, uh, how I know that I am is just how how much I really, I mean, I grew up understanding myself as male, of course, um, and my sex is male, but my, but as far as gender goes, like, I really, really enjoyed being around girls. Um, I really felt way more comfortable sitting at like the girls table um, at school it was easier for me to start up conversations um, I wanted to be cool with them um, I was also attracted to them um, but but just in general that's those were the easiest friendships that I made. Um, I get great guy friends as well, um, but it but being like one of the guys was not not really as easy for me. I could definitely perform it. I could perform kind of the male culture that there was. I could still fit in, but it wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say it was as easy or, or it came as naturally. Um, in the last few years, um, so I have, I've been blessed to have so many queer friends that are so out, that are, have already spent so much time breaking their own breaking out of uh, cultural limitations that were taught to them and um, dressing more freely and um, yeah just expressing more freely and I'll admit a lot of it at first was very like challenging to me um, but uh, I have this friend Grace who is amazing and she would um, go like thrift shopping with me and help pick me out things that she thought I would look good in and um, it was often from the women's section and I just realized wow like this is so much more colorful than than all the sections I've ever shopped in um, some of it is definitely too out there for me so I had to kind of figure out like okay I like all this color I like these different I like the variety of shapes and textures, um, but like what kinds of patterns am I into, you know? And it ended up being kind of stuff like this. Like I, I like these brighter colors, which are not objectively feminine or masculine, you know? But yet like our culture has aligned itself in a certain kind of way. Um, but I really enjoy this, this kind of thing. I enjoy makeup. Um, again, those are not specifically feminine or masculine things and that I mean that is exactly the conclusion so many of the ways that I am don't need to be on a scale on a spectrum um gender roles arbitrary it's all arbitrary 
and um, and so I feel more free when I'm not trying to be one or the other. Uh, so yeah, that is an explanation of my non-binary self, most simply. There's definitely more that I could expand on, but I think that's enough for this. Just to say that publicly is important for me. So I'm a magician, tarot reader, divider, diviner, non-binary. What are other things I am? I'm a musician. That's been easy for a long time to say musician. I'm a poet. I'm an artist. Um, let's see, heritage, I'm half Mexican. I'll admit that, I'll admit that in this society it is easier, it is easier to just, you know, present and to just see myself even, to just like see myself as, as white because it's generally the color of my skin, but I am half Mexican, half of my family, half of my DNA is Mexican. That means all the immigration talk that there is, all of the, uh, you know, just any time cultural observations are made in regards to Mexicans, like that does affect me. I'm not near as good at Spanish as I should be, and so um, there is a lot of that culture that I'm not as connected to because of my own faults or my own like limitations, my own lack of understanding, my lack of ability to engage, but it is still a part of me so much. And um, that's something that I hope to expand on in my own life is, uh, you know, where, where are the gaps in my persona that would be uh, even wounds, you know, that, that would be healed by by better embracing that part of me um, is a good question for myself going forward what are other things I am I'm a philosopher I'm a psychonaut I love exploring the depths of my mind it's as infinite as the ocean or space I do consider myself that a writer in general a thinker a challenger a teacher a producer I like to take other people's ideas and refine them make them bigger focus them I am kind of inherited pet ownership. Uh, my partner has birds and cats and tarantulas and a bunny. And um, now that I live with her, they're all kind of mine as well. She still bears most of the responsibilities of them, but I am actively trying to develop a relationship with those animals. Um, and, uh, so that, you know, that's a part of my identity as well. There's a lot here. There's a lot there. Even just saying that, like, this is so foreign to me. I just live my life day after day, a lot of times without making any observations about it. But if I've learned anything from my studies of, like, quantum physics is that 
when things are observed, they're affected. Observation affects things, changes things. So if you can't observe yourself, how are you going to change yourself? Not actively. You just change passively. The observation is very important. So I'm doing this, resisting the urge to call it self-absorbed. Even just looking at my when even just looking at yourself feels narcissistic, then you have some you have some some issues to work through because it's not narcissistic. It's not self-absorbed. You need to know yourself. How can you have healthy relationships with anybody if you don't know who you are? If you can't even put into words things about yourself? Or if the words that you say about yourself all have to be kept private, it's all going to be harder to do. It's going to be harder to move. It's going to be harder to build. So that's why I'm doing this. And um, that's something that that's something that I wish for everybody to be able to do. I know that not everyone has the privilege of being able to express the express certain parts of themselves without. Without repercussions, without judgments, and I guess I might have some of those, but I just, in in the life that I have, they they won't be difficult. Not compared to um, the the oppressions that are out there for uh, for different races for for different orientations for the trans community it's pretty easy for me to be me and even saying all of these things it's probably still going to be pretty easy to be honest relatively I'm taking care of These, uh, I already have a community of people that accepts all of this about me. So I don't actually have to do much rebuilding. I just get to easier express myself now. Um, so I know not everybody else. I know not everybody has the privilege. But... When the opportunity is real, I hope everybody can. And even when it's not as easy, I hope that people can. Because people do. Every day. There's a lot to unpack here. I could... There's a lot. I'm getting into territory that does deserve to be talked about but that I should talk about with more intention at a at another time. And I'm still learning a lot. So also just, should just be talked about with more knowledge also. I am a baby in a lot of these things. Uh, so anyways, if anyone listens to these, uh, thank you. Um, just Just for listening. And then if, if you have any thoughts, thank you for those as well in advance. Uh, I don't I don't really know everybody that, that watches these videos. Um, but hopefully hopefully this is at least interesting to to somebody or encourages somebody. But mostly I just needed to do this for me. So um, I'm gonna go start my day now. <laughs>